بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ویلکم ٹو مائی فورتھ کلاس سو ایز آئی واز ڈسکسنگ اباؤٹ دی سیٹومین آف این آن دی ادر ہینڈ پوزسٹ اینٹی انفیریئر اینٹی انفلمیٹری ایکٹیویٹی کمپیئرڈ ود اسپرین این سیڈ سو ایف وی کین کمپیئر دی اینٹی انفلمیٹری ایکٹیویٹی آف ایسیٹومین آف این این اسپرین سو ایسیٹومین آف این ایٹس اینٹی انفلمیٹری ایکٹیویٹی ایز ویکر if it is compared with the aspirin and NSAID and this it is relatively ineffective in treating the inflammatory conditions like rheumatoid arthritis. So what, what does it mean? So it means that uh, if you are going to treat uh, a patient uh, who is suffering from rheumatoid arthritis, so it should be, it must be he or she must be treated with uh, aspirin not with acetaminophen because acetaminophen, its anti-inflammatory activity as weakers. then aspirins while aspirin is strong in inflammatory activity despite this acetaminophen is a popular mild analgesic and antipyretic and is a suitable alternative to aspirin for the patient who develops severe symptom of stomach irritation because it is not that is not as harmful to the gastrointestinal tract Common used acetaminophen, there is paracetamol, N-acetyl, P-manophenols. It is analgesic and antipyretic drug, orally drug, induced drug is maximal effect of 2 to 4 hours. Overdosing may cause damaging of liver, hepatotoxicity and renal toxicity. So these are overdosing. So let's suppose if you are going to exceed the dose from its normal concentration, from its normal quantity so it will damage your liver or kidney. There are various side effects which are reported by the nostril anti-inflammatory drug as might be expected from their common mechanism of actions which can stop the prostaglandin synthesis. Many of these anti-inflammatory analgesic drugs share similar side effects. Now come to hypersensitivity. So hypersensitivity is another side effect of this. So hypersensitivity responses to aspirin like drugs. They are thought to be due to accumulation of prostaglandin after the pathways that break down prostaglandin are blocked. And these responses can be fatal when very strong anti-inflammatory compounds are used. Nowadays you know that the uh, outbreak due to corona outbreak is, you know, this is viral infections. So um, it is strongly recommended that uh, if you can use uh, paracetamol instead of profines because ibuprofenes or aspirin they are very active to our hypersensitivity they are, they are very active to that virus that's why some of the drug they are they are banned it cannot be used and such a, such, such a kind of condition whenever there is a take up uh, viral infections Furthermore, uh, peptic ulcer, liver damage, and renal toxicity, uh, there may cause inhibition of prostaglandin synthesis. It may inhibit and other serious side effects such as peptic ulcer and reduce the ability of platelets in the blood to aggregate and form clot. A liver damage occasionally occur after the administration of acetaminophen. So these are the side effects which, is, which, which are reported here. And the literatures. Renal toxicity is sometimes seen with use of NSAIDs. Let's suppose if you are using inside nostril anti-inflammatory drugs, so it may there may be a chance of renal toxicity. These are the side effects which are reported. These are the side effects of aspirin. So aspirin itself taken if, if it become overdose. So there may be chances of deafness. Deafness means you, you can't hear some things and ringing in the ears, uh, diarrhea, nausea, headaches, which disappear when the dose is reduced or stops. And there may be chance of rise syndrome. Now, Ray syndromes, uh, actually, this is the syndrome which is reported uh, due to use of aspirin. Aspirin is also thought to be a causative agent of Ray syndromes. It is a rare and serious degenerative disease of brain and fatty tissue of liver that accompanies certain viral infection in children and young adults. Some aspirin, like analgesics, have also specific toxic effects. So look at here, these are dry syndromes, so it may cause hepatotoxicity. It is extremely serious pathological condition associated with swelling of liver and brain. It means in dry syndromes. In dry syndrome, two organs, they are affected. One is liver and the second one is brain. 
Now come to our opioid analgesic. So opioid analgesic is the name indicates that the term opioid has been adopted as a general classification of all those agents that shared chemical structure, sites, and mechanism of action with the endogenous opioids. Agonist endogenous substances are those that produce inside the human bodies. For example, opioid agonist drug may be agonist or it may be antagonist, which I have already explained in my previous lectures that how we can differentiate between agonist and antagonist. One can enhance your biological activity and the second one is to block, to inhibit. So here in this case opioid agonist actually endogenous substances are those substances which are produced inside the human body. <coughs> now come to word here. These are look at here opium tinctures uh, which uh, contain morphine, codeine, narcotine, and pepivarine, etc. These are raw opiums. So from poppy to morphine, I will discuss in, in detail, inshallah. Now these are the group of endogenous substances into which are produced in the human body. So these are the group of endogenous substances which are the group of endogenous. Look at here. So the group of endogenous substances, the first one is n kepalines that come under the category of endogenous substances. The second one is endorpine and the second one is uh, dinorpines. Now what are encapalines? So encapalines are actually these are at stimulate the delta receptor. So as we know that there are different type of receptors which are present in the human body. So these are actually uh, at can stimulate the delta receptor. The second one is endorphine. Endorphine act on mu and delta receptors. So these are especially these are the receptors in which the opioid analgesic skin bind with it. These are the binding sites of drugs. So the sites through uh, the site through with these uh, drug can binds actually these are that maybe in the form of mu receptor, kappa receptor and delta receptors. Endorphin act on mu and delta receptor it reduce pain and has positive effect on brains. The third one is dinorpine. So dinorpines, dinorpine, they are responsible to stimulate the copper receptors. So dinorpines at stimulate the copper receptors, while endorpines stimulate the mu and delta receptor, and encapoline stimulate the delta receptors. Now dinorpines, all three have opioid-like actions, and they are found in the body. What are opioid analgesics? These are those drugs which relieve the pain sensation as well as to produce or cause sleep, induce sleep. They are naturally occurring peptides uh, that possess analgesic action and addiction potentials. And some people, so they are addict of such kinds of substances and these receptors can be blocked by naloxones uh, and naltrexone which is morphine and these are morphine antagonists you can say there are some antidotes which are used against whenever there is uh, let's suppose a poisoning let's suppose uh, these toxins can be uh, how these uh, anti antidotes let's suppose if overdosing occurs in case of overdosing so there are certain uh, antidotes which are used so this receptor can be blocked by naloxone or uh, naltrexone because these are actually morphine antagonist. So against agonist we are using antagonist. Opioid substances actually are those substances which encompasses all the natural and synthetic chemical compost closely related to morphines. Uh, whether they act as agonists, cellular activators or antagonist substances that block the action of the agonist are called antagonist. It means that agonists are activators and antagonists are actually the blockers of agonist. What are addictive drugs? Addictive drugs, although the interest in these drugs had uh, always been high because of their value in pain relief and because of the problems of abuse and addiction, interest intensified in 1970 and 80, by discoveries about the naturally occurring morphine-like substances, the endogenous opioid neuropeptides. You know opiums, opiums. So opiums uh, and pharmacognosy. We are studying about the different type of medicinal plants. So opium is actually opium as a powder from the dried juice of poppy is called pepper somniparens. When taken orally, opium produces sleep and induces a state of peaceful well-being. It's used 
dates back at least to uh, Babylonian civilizations. In the early 19th century, opium extract was found to contain more than 20 distinct complex organic bases called alkaloids. It means that the actually the extracts of the these substances which can be extracts from the uh, opiums it contain more than 20 distinct complex organic bases which are called alkaloids uh, that is in the form of morphine codeine peppermint so they are most important and these power alkaloid are rep replaced crude opium extract in therapeutics uh, the mechanism of actions of opioids actually analgesic so uh, almost in the uh, about 1950 uh, centuries uh, several new morphine like drugs were developed despite the increase in number of compounds available for pain relief however little <coughs> was understood of their sites and mechanism of site as i have discussed that there are some drugs which can bind with the mu kappa and delta receptors There are some uh, serious cascade reactions which were re which were reported when morphine was administered. So due to uh, uh, morphine, due to morphine's psychological depressions may be occurs. It may cause psychological depression. It may directly load on your blood pressure. Inshallah, in my next lecture, I will discuss about the uh, all the drugs which are related with the opioid analgesics. Thank you so much.